Hey, good morning. This is um, me, Nisi, and I am remaking this video because I had tried to film it uh, several times, and I've tried to film it with my tablet, so I'm back on my phone. Uh, I guess the video was one too long to upload. So I'm gonna try to run through this as quick as possible. I've done this like five times already now. <laughs> I tried to edit it, it's not working, so I tried to do live stream. It was a glitch in the matrix. It just got all discombobulated, so just bear with me. I'm going to move this camera back a little bit so we can get a better angle. I am wanting to come to you guys today in the group, Ancient Astronaut Theory, The Real Truth, as well as other social media platforms to specifically talk about what we are missing as any energy beings or light beings. I have researched over the past six years and understand the ancient teachings. And to the people who are not initiated, are not versed in Egyptian mysteries and the, um, the occult, which means hidden, I want to try to make this as simple as possible. I feel as though we are missing the mark on what the ancient teachings state. Thousands of years ago, we were visited right we were visited and these celestial or earthly avatars were created yeah i know how that sounds but if you've been in the group long enough to know then you know where i'm going with this or where i'm going down the rabbit hole so not gonna ramble on gonna make this short and hopefully this will tie in later on the the scriptures that i'm going to be reading from you can get the king james version bible as well as the Upanishads, the state of consciousness. The chapter, I think, is number four in the Upanishads. The first scripture I'm going to read, Matthew 6.22, which is my favorite. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. 1 Corinthians 6, chapters 19 and 20, or verses 19 and 20, reads, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in spirit, which are God's. Psalms 82.6 says, I have said, ye are God's, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, I found this paper online, right? <clears throat> and I wanted to read this to you, and I will upload this to the group. It's in a PDF format, <clears throat> and I found it in this, in this by this gentleman by Dave DeWitt. And it talks about, <clears throat> I'll just read it. Light in the Bible. In the Bible, there are 229 references to light. 156 in the Old Testament, 73 in the New Testament. In addition to these, there are references to the effects of light, such as rainbows, stars, brightness, lightning, and brightness, whiteness, brilliant whiteness, as in things that are shining. These alone come to 400 references to some form of light. Needless, needless to say, light is a huge subject in the Bible. I will here attempt to give a sample of these arranged according to four theological areas. So, one, God describes himself, God himself is described as being light and surrounded by light. Okay. Two, God created light. Three, angels and saints of God are often described in terms of light. And four, revelation from God is referred to as light. We are all light beings, energy beings. That's why when I greet you guys on social media, I say, hello, my beautiful light beings, because I understand what we are. This is a construct. We are in a university or a nursery, and we are babes. And there are two biggest deceptions on the planet right now. One is that we are these physical avatar bodies, right? And then two, we are looking for this being to come back and save us in the sky. When the fallacy is we are looking externally when we need to go internally because we are eternal beings. We are divine creation, life spark beings from the most high. 
We are fractal pieces of the infinite creator. Fractal pieces of light or energy. When you come into this body, physical body, you weigh a certain weight. Once the human, once the energy body leaves the physical avatar body, you weigh less. If you were to drop dead right here on the floor by a heart attack or what have you, the first thing a person's going to do is check for breath, start doing chest compressions and breathe into your mouth to reflow the energy to the heart. You would be shocked by an AED. Why on the world, why in the world do people have such a hard time understanding that you are not your body? You are not white, black, brown, or yellow. You are an infinite being. You are in a temporary vehicle or vessel. Your body is only a temporal, a temporal being. It is only temporal in nature, meaning you have a certain, you have a certain time frame that you're going to live in this realm and then you exit the body because it's a vehicle. That's all it is. So people identify as being race, you know, black lives matter, you know, um, white supremacy, all this mess that's going on on TV. I don't look at it. I refuse to, to look at it because I don't want to lower my vibration, my frequency. I am trying to increase or raise my frequency to go within, to tap into my divine nature, my divine self. So I'm going to read these to you quickly. I'm going to choose the first section where it says God himself is described as being light and surrounded by light. I'm going to read these scriptures off to you and then I want you to do your research. And I will break this video up because I have it on a timer and I'm not going to go over a certain time. So out of this, it says Jacob 36, 30, behold, he spreads his lightning about him. Psalms 104, one through two, one through two. Oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a cloak. Daniel 2, 22. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells in him. Isaiah 9, 2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. John 1, 6 through 9. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was a true light which coming into the world enlightens man. 1 John 1 5. This is the message we have heard from him announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Yeshua, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Revelations 4, 3, he was sitting, was, he was sitting, was like a Jasper and Sardis in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. Revelations 21, 23, and the city has no need of of the sun or of the moon to shine on it for the glory of God has illuminated it and its lamp is his lamp is the lamb now Amos I believe it is uh, is it 520 I believe it says the day of the Lord is darkness I think that's the scripture I'm trying to go by memory and so for me when I read scripture in ancient text it does not matter if you read the Hebrew text of the Christian Bible, I have studied it and I truly believe that that book has been cherry picked and it was written by the Hellenistic Greeks in code. So if you are uninitiated and not initiated, you will be taught a certain set of um, beliefs. If you are initiated in the occult, then you understand what it is and who we are and what this place is. In the Upanishads, as I had said before, it is in chapter, let's see, it is chapter four, and it talks about, let me get back to my page. It talks about the state of consciousness. And that's where I'm trying to get to. I apologize. 
I had it flagged and you know how it is when you start, you start talking, uh, you lose your place. And now I can't find it. <laughs> so, um, here it is. I apologize. Okay. The States of Conscience is chapter four. All right, so I'm just going to skim through this, and then I'll let you guys get back to your day. As I said before, I'm going to split this video up because I don't want it to be too long-winded because people have a tendency to drift off. Chapter 4, The States of Consensus. Uh, Yanni Volk came to Yanga, King of Vedi, saying to himself, I will not talk today, but earlier, while they were discussing the fire ceremony, Yanga Volka had promised him any boon he wanted. Now the king asked the sage permission to question him. So it's a conversation between a sage and a king. And this is in the Apamashads. It says, uh, Yanavalka, what is the light of man? The sun is our light. For the light we sit, work, go out, and come back. When the sun sets, what is the light of man? And then the question is answered. The moon is our light, for by that light we sit, work, go out, and come back. When the sun sets and the moon sets, what is the light of man? Fire is our light, for by that we work, we sit, we work, go out, and come back. When the sun sets and the moon sets, the fire goes out, what is the light of man? Then speech is our light, for by that we sit, work, go out, come back, even though we cannot see our hand in darkness. We can hear what is said and move towards the person speaking. When the sun sets and the moon sets and the fire goes out, no one speaks. What is the light of man? The self indeed is the light of man, your majesty. For by that we sit, work, go out and come back. Who is the self? The self, pure awareness, shines as a light within the heart, surrounded by the senses, only seeming to think, seeming to move, the self neither sleeps nor wakes nor dreams. When the self takes on a body, he seems to assume the body's frailties and limitations. But when he sheds the body at the time of death, the self leaves all behind, all these behind. The human being has two states of consciousness in the world, the other and the next, but there is a third state between them, not unlike the world of dreams in which we are aware of both worlds with their sorrows and joys. We are living in a dream world, a sleepy time world. When you're awake, as you are watching me now in this video, you're driving, going to work, you're listening to me, or you are awake and paying bills and functioning in society and taking care of your kids and your spouse, you are in a dream state. When you go to sleep at night, when you rest these avatar bodies, your spirit or energy leaves the body. You are still tethered to it, yes, but these bodies have to be, they're well-designed machines and they have to be maintained. You have to feed it, you have to exercise it, it has to have proper sleep and proper minerals, right, to grow and regenerate and for you to be healthy, correct? And so when you leave, you have access to the, the ether, to creation, the Akashic records, the universe at the time that you sleep. And it is the same as when you pass. Only we don't remember because we may wake up in the middle of the night in a night sweat, in a terror, a bad dream, a crazy dream. And you think, oh my God, it's because you were out of your body. You were in a different realm. You were tethered to the physical because you still have your body here on the side but you're able to exit and you're able to astral project or to roam the universe freely. So it says the human being has two states of consciousness, one in this world, the other in the next, but there is a third state between them, not unlike the world of dreams in which we are aware of both worlds with their sorrows and joys. When a person dies, it is only the physical body that dies. That person lives on in a non-physical body, which carries the impressions of his past life. It is these impressions that determine his next life and their immediate state he makes and dissolves impressions by the light of the self. In the third state of consciousness, there are no chariots, no horses drawing them or roads on which to travel. But he wakes up, he makes up his own chariots, horses and roads. In that state, there are, t there are no joys or pleasures, but he makes up his own joys and pleasures. 
In that state, there are no lotus ponds, no lakes, no rivers, but the makes up his own lotus ponds, lakes, and rivers. It is he who makes up all these from the impressions of his past or waking life. It is said of these states of consciousness that the dreaming state when one is sleeping, the shining self who never dreams is ever awake and watches by his own light, the dreams woven out of his past deeds and present desires. In the dreaming state, when one is sleeping, the shining self keeps the body alive while the vital force of prana, chi, god particle, energy, whatever you want to call it, boson, Higgs boson, intelligent consciousness, right? It has a vital force of prana and wonders wherever he wills. In the dreaming state, when one is sleeping, the shining self assumes many forms, eats with friends, indulges in sex, sees fearsome spectacles. But he is not affected by anything because he is detached and free and wandering here and there in the state of dreaming, enjoying pleasures and seeing good and evil. He returns to the state from which he began. As great fish swim between the banks of a river as it likes, so does the shining self move between states of dreaming and waking. While you are awake, you are actually in a dream. And when you are asleep, you are awake. Does that make sense? As an eagle, weary after soaring in the sky, folds its wings and flies down to rest in its nest, so does the shining self enter the state of dreamless and sleep, where one is freed from all desires. The self is free from desire, from evil, free from fear. As a man in the arms of his beloved is not aware of what is without and what is within, so a person in union with a self is not aware of what is without and what is within. For in that unitive state, all desires find their perfect fulfillment. There is no other desire that needs to be fulfilled, and one goes beyond sorrow. In that unitive state, there is neither father or mother, nor worlds, nor gods, nor even scriptures. In that state, there is neither thief nor slayer, neither low caste nor high, neither monk nor ascetic. The self is beyond good and evil, beyond all suffering of the human heart. In that unitive state, one sees without seeing, for there is nothing separate from him. Smells, some smells for smelling, for there is nothing separate from him. Tastes without tasting, for there is nothing separate from him. Speaks without speaking, for there is nothing separate from him. Hears without hearing, for there is nothing separate from him. Touches without touching, for there is nothing separate from him. Thinks without thinking, for there is nothing separate from him. Knows without knowing, for there is nothing separate from him. Where there is separateness, one one sees another, smells another, tastes another, speaks to one another, hears another, touches another, thinks of another, knows of another. But where there is unity, one without a second, that is the world of Brahma. And that would be considered heaven or divine connection with the universal consciousness or spirit, or as we call it here on Mother Key or Earth as God, a connection with the divine. This is the supreme goal of life the supreme treasure, the supreme joy. Those who do not seek the supreme goal live on what a fraction of this joy. And we're not taught that by these religious indoctrinations around the world. Every single culture and tribe on this planet Earth has an unnamed deity at the top, a divine being at the top of the pantheon. And it is the same being. We all worship a different way because there were different teachings and the teachings have been molested. The original teachings on this planet came from a higher state of conscious beings who were not from the earth. They were from somewhere else. Yes, I know how that sounds, but it is written and it is sitting up in a museum where nobody cares to read it. We were taught by the Atlantean priest King Thoth. And when Atlantis was destroyed and Lemur was destroyed, Lemu, then they migrated to Egypt. And so that is where you get the Egyptian, Sumerians, and so forth. And so you have the city of the Agdada, the eight-pointed star, Hermopolis. And then they are taught from ancient Egypt to Greece and all around the world. So that is why we have these different traditions, because these beings were mobile. They weren't just limited to one area. They traveled the entire world because they had traveled the entire solar system because they were not from this earth. And I know how that sounds. Take a minute to grasp that. Download what I'm saying. So, but 
where there is separateness, one sees another, smells another, tastes another, speaks to another, hears another, touches another, thinks of another, knows of another. But where there is unity, one without a second, that is the world of Brahma. This is the supreme goal of life, the supreme treasure, the supreme joy. Those who do not seek this supreme live on but a fraction of this joy. I give you another thousand cows. Please teach me more of your way to self-realization. This is what Yanka is saying to Yalavanka. And I'm probably not pronouncing these words right because I don't speak that language, but you get the gist. So, as a heavy laden cart creaks as it moves along, the body groans under its burden when a person is about to die. When the body grows weak through old age or illness, the self separates himself as a mango or a fig or a banyan fruit tree, fruit frees itself from the stalk of a tree and returns the way he became to begin another life. Just as when a king is expected to visit a village, the mayor and all of the other officials turn out to welcome him with food and drink. All creation awaits the person who sheds his body, having realized Brahma. Here he comes, they say. Here he comes, Brahma himself. But the senses, while the man is lying, dying, gathering around and mourning the self-departure as courtiers mourn when their king is about to leave. When, when body and mind grow weak, the self gathers all of the powers of the life and descends with them into the heart. As prana leaves the eye, it ceases to see. He is becoming one, says the wise. He does not see. He is becoming one. He no longer hears. He is becoming one. He no longer speaks or tastes or smells or thinks or knows. By the light of the heart, the self leaves the body by one of its gates. And when the leaves prana flow follows and with it all the vital powers of the body, he who is dying merges in consciousness and thus consciousness accompanies him when he departs along with the impressions of all that he has done, experienced, and known. As a caterpillar, having come to the end of one blade of grass, draws itself together and reaches out for the next, so the self. Having come to the end of one life and dispelled all ignorance, gathers in faculties and reaches out from the old body to a new as a goldsmith fashions an old ornament into a new and more beautiful one, so the self, having reached the end of the last life, dispelled all ignorance, makes for himself a new, more beautiful shape like that of the devas or other celestial beings. The self is indeed Brahma, but through ignorance, people identify it with intellect, mind, senses, passion, and elements of earth, water, space, fire. And this is why the self is said to consist of this and that and appears to be everything. As a person acts, so he becomes in life. Thus, do good, become good. Those who do harm are bad. Good deeds make one pure, bad deeds make one impure. You are what you deep, you are what your deep des driving desire is. As your desire is, so is your will. As you will is, so is your deed. And as your deed is, so is your destiny. We live in accordance with our deep driving desire. It is a desire at the time of death that determines what our next life will be. We will come back to earth, work out the satisfaction of that desire. And as I stated in the Lost Teachings of Atlantis, when we came into these vessels, we shed our separate self and we had fallen to a lower state of consciousness. And so we have incurred a lot of negative karma and we have to work through that negative karma and shed the separate self. And I know this may sound strange to some of you because you have been taught or indoctrinated into the Christian faith. And if you are not initiated into the occult and all things, then you were not taught everything that you think you know. And no, I don't know everything but I have studied enough to know this. So, but, but not those who are free from desire. They are free because all the desires have found fulfillment in the self. They do not die like the others, but realizing Brahma, they merge into Brahma. So it is said, when all the desires that surge in the heart are renounced, the mortal becomes immortal. When all the knots that strangle the heart are loosened, the mortal becomes immortal. Here in this very life. As the skin of a snake is sloughed into the anthill, so does the mortal body fall. But the self freed from the body merges into Brahma, infinite life, eternal light, God, source, 
bows higs on, whatever you want to call it. I give you another thousand cows. Please teach me the way of self-realization, Yanka says to Yalonka. Those who realize the self enter into the peace that brings complete self-control and perfect patience. They see themselves in, in everyone and in everyone themselves. Evil cannot overcome them because they overcome all evil. Sin cannot consume them because they consume all sin. Free from evil, free from sin and doubt, they live in the kingdom of Brahma. Your majesty, the kingdom is yours. And I'm going to stop the video here because I'm right at, at uh, under 30 minutes. I wanted to read scriptures from New King James Version Bible, also the Upanishads, and give you the correlation to explain one very important thing to you. Don't get caught up to what is going on in the political polls of tricks or polytricks. Do you not know whether you are Democrat or Republican, Jew, Christian, Muslim, and you vote and you're here in the United States? You are missing one key important factor, actually two. One, you are being deceived into thinking that you are these temples or these vessels. You are looking at me on the screen and I appear to be a woman of color, a black woman, Native American descendant. I appear to be that, but I am not. <laughs> this is just a vehicle. Consider it to be a Porsche or a Corvette or a Jag. When your energy body leaves this vessel, you will go into another vessel. How many times have you lived in being reincarnated? How many times have you been here to work out your soul salvation and to grow into what you are today? The second deception is that we are looking for this being to come out of the sky and to save us. And when these entities come here, when they came here thousands of years ago, and they come so, ever so many years based on the yuga cycles and the position of our planet within the solar system, they come here and they try to teach us, okay? takes a sacrifice to come here and to come into a human form, into this body and animate this body. We as humans always follow these teachings, whether it's Krishna, Muhammad, Yeshua. Um, we follow these beings and we hang on their every word and we end up worshiping them instead of paying attention to the teachings and following what they are trying to teach us. Instead, we get caught up on following the individual. So we have these shrines and these crosses and these things in our homes as worship and pay homage to these, to these, to these, to these human beings that walked, these avatars that walked on this planet when they were simply trying to save us and show us a path to go to and to reach. So in closing, I just want to state, stop looking at yourself as being black, white. Stop looking at yourself as being uh, racially divided in this country because the biggest lie that's ever told on this planet is that one, these beings are going to come back and save you when you need to save yourself. And two, you are who the U.S. government or the governments around the world or these religious institutions tell you that you are. You are not. They are limiting you by telling you to identify with your human form, with these avatar vessels, and they're limiting you by telling you to worship externally when you need to go within your temple and build your temple in the shadows. Work out your own salvation, your soul salvation yourself. Stop paying into this race game. The reason why this world is the way it is is because of the ones who are in control that are not of this world. And yes, I know how that sounds and I know you guys don't agree. You may not and that's fine. We agree to disagree respectfully. I am not a actress. I am not a agent of um, the devil or of evil. I am simply someone who has spent six years researching and reading and I understand what this is and I am passionate about it and I want to share it with the world and share with as many people who understand and resonate with what I'm saying. Be careful who you allow into your life, into your life circle because those that are close to you can also be the very ones who are working against you to keep you dumbed down in a lower state of vibration. We are given everything that we need within us. 
within these bodies, within these temples. These avatars were intelligently designed. The very first humans were created in Iridu, Iraq. And it is said that they were of color, someone who looked like me. The African woman is the only woman on the face of the planet as an avatar who can create all life and all different races. Look it up. It's genetically written. There's papers on it. That the, the African woman, the black woman, is the only woman in the world as far as an avatar that can give life like that. That started the whole entire race on this planet. We were mixed with the seed of the extraterrestrials, the indigenous ape creatures that were here, and the clay from the earth. It is written in pyramids, Sumerian cuneiform tablets, and in museums. But nobody bothers to read it because we are too caught up in looking at what we've been taught, the three Abraham, Abrahamic religions, which came from an extraterrestrial. In closing, I just want to say thank you for spending the day with me. Thank you for taking this 30 minutes. I'm cutting it short. I will come back with the second half of this teaching because I think it is very important for us to examine really what God is and truly understand that these avatars or these vessels are electrical appliances and we need to use them to their full attention, full potential while we still have time because we are in this temporal plane or these bodies for a short period of time. Prior to the flood, we lived hundreds of years. Once the Tower of Babel and the Great Deluge, our DNA was clamped down at 120 years because they shortened our telomeres. It is genetically proven that we were engineered or we were created in a lab, the human avatar body. Yeah, no, having a hard time wrapping your mind around this. Stay tuned. I will try to explain it as best as possible in a short and concise message. Thank you for joining me. You guys be the change you want to see all around this planet because Lord knows there's only a few of us that really understand what's going on. Have a great day. Bye.